So I'm Barry Botham, uh, Professor of Skilled Trades in Kingston. Uh, I teach mainly in the carpentry program, do teach some uh, PD training as well. Uh, and Len, as it says there, is a certified carpenter, owner of Windsor Custom Homes, and a big supporter of St. Lawrence College. Okay, so topics of discussion today, we're going to be looking at uh, different ways uh, carpentry programs are offered, uh, both here in Kingston and in Cornwall as well. Um, how we meet the students' needs, and uh, we've already received some questions, so part of the how we're going to meet their needs uh, will address some of the questions that we've already received ahead of time. Uh, one of the big ones, I would have to say, is the importance of apprenticeship, okay? Uh, we, we hear the word apprenticeship, uh, some of us have an idea of what it might mean, but some of us don't really understand the importance of what apprenticeship means. Uh, or what apprenticeship is and when, when we're dealing with apprenticeship it, it is very important to uh, uh, to make sure that, that we're involved in a program that's going to be credited uh, towards an apprenticeship because uh, life is short we don't want to waste any time that's for sure okay um, <clears throat> we'll also take a look near the end of how to apply and register uh, both programs our full-time program uh, and our apprenticeship program uh, the way of enrolling will be uh, totally different uh, but uh, rest assured, both of them you will be receiving apprenticeship credit for. Um, we're also going to look at the average income. Uh, one of the important steps I would have to say with any career is, can I afford to uh, make this step? And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, if you are currently working in the trades, then you're well, well aware that, uh, that you can make some, uh, some decent money. Uh, so th these are some of the things we're going to be looking at. Uh, over the next half hour or so and uh, I do look forward to your questions and like Heather said earlier if you have questions feel free to send the questions in and uh, we will be addressing all the questions and if we happen to run out of time because we have, do have another webinar back-to-back uh, -back, uh, today if we do happen to run out of time uh, rest assured that I will be responding to you because we will have your email address and uh, we'll, we'll get back to you with, uh, with some answers should we have too many questions, which will be a really great problem to have. Okay, so our first program uh, is a program that's mainly designed uh, to allow the graduate, uh, a lot of the time it's to allow the graduate to uh, receive great uh, experience that will fortunately, uh, in most cases, uh, land them uh, an interview and possibly employment uh, within uh, within the job or within the uh, trade of carpentry. Um, actually, Len, uh, you, you've uh, recently made an arrangement or made an agreement with uh, one of our current students that's in the carpentry techniques program here in Kingston uh, to uh, to hire after uh, after they graduate. Yeah, that's correct. Um, <clears throat> we have a guy that's uh, going to be finishing up, I believe, in June. And so he'll be starting full time with us in June, but we've also made arrangements because the, uh, the program does have some flexibility in the schedule that we've got him coming in part time. Um, more for just to let him get to know the guys and to get the feel of uh, what the job is like um, in, the, in the real world outside the classroom. So um, that'll be a good uh, little head start for him uh, once he starts uh, full time in June. So we're looking forward to that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one, one of the programs that are courses that we teach within that program is, uh, is employment skills and uh, we go in and we, we talk uh, with the students. Uh, I have to admit that, that I, I've been a contractor for, for many years as well as teaching full time uh, in the trades. So, uh, so I know exactly what, what Len's talking about when he's uh, talking about uh, getting, getting them some really good work experience. Um, so mo moving back into the actual carpentry techniques program, uh, how this one works, this program is it's a, and, and this program is also offered, it's, it's a slightly different name, it's, uh, uh, it's a carpentry program, I'm trying to think of the name right now in Cornwall, uh, it, it works the same way uh, where you go for the entire first year, uh, it's a one year full time program, 36 weeks, uh, where you'd start uh, typically on the Tuesday after Labor Day. Um, and, and you, you basically will cover uh, really uh, in great depth uh, all of level one in carpentry. There's, there's three levels become, before you become a Red Seal certified carpenter. 
so, so we're looking at uh, really, really in-depth studies of level one, uh, and we get into level two as well, which is uh, framing and uh, a lot of the fun stuff that a lot of the people uh, tend to get into this trade for, framing and trimming uh, and finished carpentry and that sort of thing. So um, during that time, uh, I, I will uh, let you know that, that you are going to be getting credit towards an apprenticeship. And what I mean by that is we, we have, um, I see it quite often, unfortunately, where, where we have a lot of uh, students that come to us or, or future students, future apprentices, uh, come to us and they, they may have taken a one-year program, two-year program, or maybe even a three-year program. Uh, and, and then they find out, and this is at a, at a different college because every one of our programs is definitely uh, revolves around apprenticeship and red seal trade. Um, where they come to us and they're just like, well, I've completed this program, now what do I qualify for? Uh, when we contact the ministry, the ministry, are the, are, they're the ones that determine uh, what they qualify for. And because they took an entire program that, that's not uh, uh, connected directly with a, an apprenticeship or Red Seal trade, uh, they basically start over. So uh, it, it's a tough one to, uh, to tell people after they've spent uh, quite a bit of money, a lot of time, uh, at these schools, uh, learning uh, some valuable traits, but uh, nothing that is actually given credit towards an apprenticeship. So um, I highly suggest when you're looking at these programs, make sure that you're looking for Red Seal uh, approved uh, TDA, TDA uh, training delivery agent, uh, so, so that you're getting credit for it. And you're, uh, you're actually, when you graduate from the one year program, uh, you're actually going to graduate with your level one and you're only going to have two other levels, level two or three. Uh, remaining. Uh, what does this allow? Uh, it allows for um, students uh, to receive the uh, training that will sometimes land them the job. Uh, some of the questions that we have is uh, that, that came through early uh, sort of revolve around the area is how do you find employment and this and that. And this is a program that is often uh, your, your opportunity uh, or your ticket in the door to uh, to receive that interview and uh, start working in the trade. So the the other way that we offer is is uh, is another interesting uh, way. Uh, this is where uh, you're actually considered a full time apprentice, and actually Len is uh, is a graduate of this program, and uh, um, it uh, it basically is uh, you get credit towards your Red Seal certification uh, towards your apprenticeship. Uh, it's a combination of working and attending school. Now, some of the really sweet things with, uh, with this, not that, that there aren't sweet things with both programs, but um, some of the questions that came in were, were asking like, uh, do you offer this as evening courses or do you offer it as weekend courses? Well, unfortunately, uh, the trade of carpentry is, is one of the biggest trades that, that's out there. Uh, and I will have to say that, uh, that we don't currently offer it uh, and feel it would be tough to offer it because it's such a, a large uh, trade uh, that it would take forever to uh, forever and a day to, uh, to complete it. Uh, we do it during the, during the day, daytime hours, week, weekday hours, Monday to Friday. Um, but some of the bonuses to this is because you're working, a lot of people don't realize this, you, you actually uh, qualify for uh, employment insurance. Uh, while you're in school. So essentially what happens is you work for the year uh, and then you, you come to school for uh, eight weeks for the trade of carpentry. Uh, and while you're, uh, you're here uh, doing your in-school portion, you actually receive a paycheck every two weeks uh, by the federal government uh, through your employment insurance. And in order for this to happen, you have to make sure that your employer is, is uh, paying you uh, as uh, on payroll uh, so, so that you're actually contributing into EI. So uh, make sure that's happening for sure. Um, so you, you basically come here for eight weeks and then at the end of the eight weeks, uh, you return back to work uh, to your, uh, your employer and sponsor and, uh, and, and you go from there. Okay, so, so you would continue. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, pose a question here uh, for Len. Uh, I, I, I'm just rambling on and on here. So I, I wanna make sure Len uh, has an opportunity to speak. So uh, one of the questions uh, I have for Len uh, around this is, uh, what made you get involved in the trade? Um, for me, um, I got into it pretty late. Um, I did enjoy um, learning about building. My father was a mechanical engineer and um, I remember growing up, he was always 
finishing a basement or whatever and doing stuff around the house. So that kind of just got me interested in construction in general. Um, but I remember uh, in my early 20s, uh, my in-laws were putting a big addition on their home. And I remember kind of falling in love with uh, seeing the structure go up. And um, and that kind of got me, that's what, what really got me uh, thinking about um, building and creating for a living. It was uh, the draw for me was at the end of the day to stand at your truck and look back and you virtually saw uh, the fruits of your labor. Um, literally and uh so that was that's kind of what the, the biggest draw for me was um and uh and then kind of went from there okay excellent uh having been in the trade uh i, I used to have hair when i started uh 40 years almost it's, it's actually 38 and a half years uh, i've worked in the trade uh and i have to say that that when you uh, walk away from the job site at the end of the day it's definitely rewarding mm -hmm. to see uh, see what you were able to, you and your crew were able to do in, in just a eight to a 10 hour day. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I understand totally where you're coming from. Okay. Um, so you'll notice at the, the bottom of that slide where it says graduates are well qualified to become certified tradespeople. Okay. So how does that work? Uh, essentially what happens is you uh, work for a total of three years. You come to school three times. So you come for eight weeks at a time. Uh, and, and then, uh, so you come for eight weeks, then you, then you return back to work, you do that for three consecutive years. And then because we are, uh, we're qualified more than qualified to teach, uh, students for red seal certification, they then should make a, an appointment to write an exam, uh, of which they need to, uh, attain 70% minimum on the exam. Uh, that, the, that they write with the ministry. Uh, and then once they write that exam and become qualified, uh, they uh, essentially uh, are considered to be certified tradespeople or certified carpenters. Okay? One of the other things that, that I haven't mentioned is when you're involved with this program, the Carpentry Apprenticeship Program, um, tuition uh, each time you come as an apprentice is just slightly more than $400. So that's $400 times three. So that's only $1,200 over the three years. Uh, and essentially you get to collect EI while you're here, which is a, a bonus, big bonus. And then at the end of each level, level one and level two, you're entitled to a thousand dollars. Uh, so you send in a copy of your transcript that we will provide you, uh, send that to the federal government. They send you, they look at it and they say, wow, Red Seal Trade, St. Lawrence College, Kingston. Okay. Or, or Cornwall, because as I mentioned, it is, uh, uh, taught at our Cornwall campus as well. So if they see that, that you've gone through St. Lawrence College apprenticeship programs, uh, regardless of which campus, they essentially send you a thousand dollars and which is really cool because you essentially got paid to go to school with your EI and then you receive a thousand dollars for level one, you receive a thousand dollars for level two, and then, uh, level three, when you write your exam and you become a certified tradesperson, then, uh, you qualify for $2,000. Okay, and uh, that's the good news for the men. Uh, women in the trade uh, actually qualify for, uh, so it's $4,000 total for men, and uh, our, our provincial government has uh, realized that, that we really uh, would like to see more women in the trade, so uh, the provincial government has, has identified the fact and they've made arrangements for uh, women that get into the trade to qualify for up to $6,000. So uh, that's, a, that's a new program. If you type in uh, apprenticeship incentive grants, uh, do a Google search, uh, it will uh, take you through to, uh, to that. Okay, uh, one more question I'm going to ask Len before we move on here. Uh, and, and this is one, uh, I have to admit, I mean, Len and I meet on a regular basis, but we met last week just to talk about this webinar. Uh, so it would make it look like uh, I know what I'm talking about. But so, <laughs> uh, anyway, no, uh, seriously, um, Len came up with this question, and it's a, it's a really good question. Uh, and it's, uh, what should an, an aspiring apprentice expect when approaching a potential employer for first time, or uh, um, approaching the potential employer for the first time about becoming an apprentice for their company? Really good question because uh, some people uh, will sort of jump the gun on this and Len has some really good uh, information. About this. Yeah, well, for me, um, obviously the most important thing is uh, is my company and how, how it's reflected uh, to my clients and uh, to the public. So um, who I hire is not a decision I take lightly. Um, I also, 
am thinking about succession planning. I don't ever want to hire somebody just to have a job. I want to hire them because I can provide them a career. So that's something that's important to me personally. So I, I can speak, I can't speak on other companies, but for me, and uh, so when someone approaches me and they want to be an apprentice, uh, the first thing I need to do is just to find out if they're going to be a good fit for the, for the company. So to approach an employer to think you're going to walk away um, as an apprentice the same day is, is a fairly unrealistic thought. You need to first um, gain employment with that employer, um, full disclosure that you're hoping to become an apprentice with that company. And um, if for me, if somebody approaches me and I think that they might be a good fit, then I'd probably bring them on for an amount of time, um, knowing full well that they, they that's their career goal. Um, and then I would see how they fit. Maybe it's a two, three month uh, probationary period, maybe up to six months probationary period. Um, and after that time, if I feel like um, that uh, that candidate is showing me that they have the uh, the aptitude and the work ethic that I'm looking for, um, then I would um, then I would engage in a um, in the uh, uh, apprenticeship agreement, which is a basically a dual party contract in where I make commitments to my employee and the employee makes commitments uh, to me as well as far as that uh, trade uh, that apprenticeship agreement goes. Uh, so it's not something that an employer should take lightly. Um, so it's important that um, when you apply that you bring your best self um, to to that application to that meeting and be prepared to work for a few months before that apprenticeship officially starts. Having said that though, any time that you invest, if I hire you on Monday the 1st and you don't become an official apprentice with me until six months later, that entire six months of your work hours will be credited towards your apprentice. It's not like you're working, you're not spending free, free time. Oh my goodness, I wanna put my hours in towards work because I think you need about 7,200 in Ontario. Um, all of those hours go towards your hours, um, so you get credit for them. This is this is more just making sure uh, that you're a good fit for the company. And I think any reputable company out there uh, will probably be of a uh, similar mindset. So. Absolutely. So yeah, some, some of the important things there, uh, the fact that uh, when, when you finally uh, get uh, sponsorship, so, so the, the employer decides, okay, you know what? I've really got a good employee here. They, they like working here. I like working with them. Uh, when you go to register with the ministry, uh, let's say, like, like Len said, if it takes six, eight months, maybe even a year uh, to, uh, to get the, uh, the, the sponsorship, um, when you go in to register with the ministry, the ministry basically says, so how long have you worked together? Uh, you say, well, I've worked together for eight months. Uh, they give you credit for the eight months. They say, so how many hours would you have worked in the eight months? Which, which is huge because, uh, like I said earlier, life is short and we don't want and we can't afford to waste time. So uh, essentially by, uh, by knowing this going in, it, it's really going to be a bonus. It but, also gives the, uh, the potential apprentice an opportunity to discover if they even like the trade, if that, you know, they do the day to day and they're like, you know what, maybe I don't really feel like this isn't for me. I don't really like this type of work and then no harm, no foul. And um, those decisions can be made as well, because that, that's the reality as well. You might think you like something and then in reality, it's not quite what you thought it was going to be and vice versa. It might be, you know, the best thing and you just, you, it convinces you even more. And so then you continue to pursue that avenue. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, really, when you think about it, a career, uh, is time consuming. You spend a lot of time at work. You can spend a good majority of the time at work, so uh, you might as well be happy. Uh, many, many years ago, my father said to me, he said, if you find a job that you truly love, you'll never have to go to work a day in your life. And he was absolutely correct in that because uh, with me working in the trade and now being able to share it here at the college, I mean, that's just, just amazing to me. And uh, I absolutely uh, don't feel uh, like I'm going to a job that, that I hate because I love my job every day. So. Um, it's really, really important for sure to make sure that, uh, that you're, uh, you're moving in the right direction and happy while you're doing it. Okay, so here's the, uh, the all-time question. Uh, how, can, or how much can I expect to earn? Okay. Um, well, there's a number of different things uh, that, that you can look at. There's a website that, that's on this slide right now. Uh, the actual website uh, is called payscale.com, and don't put an S on the end of scales because then it goes to an American site. Uh, but if you if you type in payscale.com, uh, it'll take you to a Canadian site, and you can type in your career choice, uh, and it, it has like every career that's out there. 
that, that you, you'd ever think of. And then you can type the area that you're, you're hoping to work, uh, the, the job that you're hoping to do, the type of education. Uh, so if, you, if you're looking at the St. Lawrence College apprenticeship program or the carpentry techniques full-time program, it's still going to come up as apprenticeship because they're both apprenticeship uh, programs. Uh, type that in and type in any other information that they ask you, then all of a sudden uh, you, you get you get a uh, average income, okay? Um, which I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, uh, especially if you were one of those people that graduated from high school and went straight into the trade of carpentry or, or any trade really, but, but uh, we're talking specifically about carpentry. Um, I have a, a scenario that, that, that I've created uh, using payscale.com and one is uh, a person that graduates from high school and they work for four years in the trade of carpentry and at the end of that four years on average in and around eastern Ontario that person is making about $27,000. Okay? Uh, so you're sitting there saying and, and I'm sitting here thinking if somebody put $27,000 in my pocket I, I'd be really happy but if they said now survive for the year uh, it's going to be really tough. Okay, uh, so that's after four years of experience with no post-secondary education, uh, nothing going towards an apprenticeship, uh, just working really hard uh, and not going towards, uh, towards a career goal in any way. Okay, so you can take the other scenario where, where a person graduated from high school and they actually thought about it ahead of time so that they looked at employers uh, or they went through the carpentry techniques program or full-time program uh, and, and then they basically uh, will, will come to school, come to the college, uh, receive their in-school portion. So um, some of the bonuses to this is the fact that um, the wages are ministry monitored. Okay, so the ministry says if you want to sponsor this person as an apprentice, they need to make somewhere between here and here. Okay, uh, and that's usually uh, the way it is where they're making somewhere between here and here. Uh, then they come to school and then they return to the job force and then the ministry basically says well that now that they've they've finished this level and they have one more year they should be making instead of here to here it's here to here um, and, and it is monitored by the ministry and uh, the employers are expected they sign a contract stating that that's that's what they agree to uh, so so i mean it, it's monitored which is is great okay uh, and and then you basically go through the three levels and then uh, when you finish that third level, some are qualified right away to write the exam, but some might take up to that four years. Uh, so where is that person now sitting? So it's the exact same four years. The first four years was no post-secondary education, no apprenticeship, and they were making $27,000. And when you go to paysforgales.com, and I'm not just making these numbers up because it is on this website, uh, the average income in Eastern Ontario in the trade of carpentry is $60,000, same four years. Okay, all they did was they, they really looked into their career, looked into their future, and did what they needed to, uh, to do to be successful. Okay, and if you're wondering, is $60,000 enough? Well, it's, it's more than double 27000 so that's a, a huge step in the, in the right direction. But to put it into perspective, uh, if you go to payscales.com and type in uh, everybody, um, everybody looks up towards nurses, uh, so if you type in uh, nurses, uh, in the Kingston area, so a full-time nurse starts at $56,000. Okay, so here's a tradesperson that got paid to go to school. Uh, they, they got their $1,000 bursary every, or every year, or grant rather, uh, every year. Uh, and, and like I said, they collect EI while they're here, so there's no student debt or very little student debt. Uh, and they're making $60,000 and here's a, a nurse. I mean, don't get me wrong, nothing against nurses. My daughter-in-law is a nurse, so yeah, please. The, uh, I've got nothing against nurses. I'm just using this as a comparable, uh, virtually making the same money, maybe slightly more. Okay. Now, some of the other bonuses with uh, with working in the, the trade of carpentry, um, I would say well over 95% of all the jobs that are being run, whether it's residential, so building a house, or building a number of houses, or building commercial buildings like, like we're in here, um, over 95% of the people running those jobs are certified licensed carpenters that, that have gone through the apprenticeship program. So um, the sky's the limit. I mean, you can choose to stay at $60,000 a year if you'd like, uh, but uh, I will tell you that, that you can easily double that uh, by becoming a project, uh, project manager, site supervisor, 
Uh, there, there's also union, non-union. Some of the other things that you want to look at as well, I, I would say with, with any career, uh, can I retire someday? Okay, so there's a lot of uh, private companies now that, that are starting to put together uh, pension plans and, and retirement plans and benefit plans and that sort of thing. Uh, and there's also the uh, Carpenters Union where, where if you register as a carpenter uh, with a union, uh, they, they also have health benefits. So something to think about when, uh, when you're uh, in, the, in the reality of this world when we have all these, uh, all these extra expenses that we've, we've got to think about. I will talk about steps to becoming a carpentry technique student as well, whether it's at our Cornwall campus or here. But this, this one is directly related to uh, becoming an apprentice. Okay, so find an employer in the chosen field is, is your first step. Okay, so as I mentioned, or as Len mentioned earlier, um, one of the, the most common errors, uh, and it's an honest error, honest mistake that people will make is they, they will um, go and they'll apply for a job and say, yeah, I, I, I want to be your next apprentice. Okay, and as Len mentioned, it's, it's quite a dedication that, that both the employer are making and the employee are making. So when, when they're making that sort of an arrangement, they want to know that you're a good fit. Okay, so, uh, and, and I always tell, uh, tell uh, students when, when I'm talking to them about this is um, going for an interview, an initial interview, a cold interview, uh, and telling them you want to be an apprentice is kind of like going, uh, going out uh, on your first date and uh, expecting to be engaged that night. Okay, so it, it, it's like a huge commitment. So uh, it's not something that, that anybody is just going to uh, sort of jump into freely. So, and knowing full well that, uh, that you are getting credit towards an apprenticeship, uh, even though you're not registered because you will get credit for the hours. Okay, so once you find this employer, you can go online. Uh, I'll share the contact information here uh, in the next slide. Uh, so you can go online uh, and actually uh, register and then they take a look at it. Um, and then if you, if you uh, are qualified and uh, approved, then essentially you, your apprenticeship starts uh, with retroactive hours and then the next available intake uh, for the level that you're signing up for, which uh, if, if you weren't in the Carpentry Techniques program will be level one. If you did successfully pass the Carpentry Techniques program, you're, you're advancing to level two immediately. So uh, bonuses to, uh, to both for sure. Uh, you basically uh, will receive approximately, uh, well not approximately, about 105 days before uh, the actual uh, program starts, uh, you'll, you'll receive notice. Okay. Now the next thing I want to tell you is the importance of actually contacting us. When I say us, uh, St. Lawrence College. Uh, you receive this letter, I, I just want to let you know that, that uh, depending on the year, we, we have, uh, like right now we've got an uh, advanced level coming in shortly. Uh, and they, they sent out about 70 offers for, for 50 seats. Okay, so uh, by doing this, um, they, uh, there, there are more people that, that, that are receiving these invites. So as soon as you get your invite to come to school, come to the college, make the arrangements <clears throat> to reserve that seat. And once you do that, uh, you're going to be good to go. Okay, um, so once you do that, you come to school and you go from there, then you'll have that, that one time no, not one-time fee. It's a, it's it's a fee that's paid each year you come to school as an apprentice, and it's around four hundred dollars. Okay, and then the following year, provided that you successfully passed all of the individual courses for the level one program, you'll advance and you'll receive notice the same way for level two, and uh, and the whole EI thing will all kick in and uh, everything falls into place uh, when you're here as an apprentice or the carpentry techniques program. I'm so used to teaching, I just want to say, does anybody have any questions? But uh, we're getting to that uh, uh, really soon. We're uh, quickly coming to, uh, to the end of uh, the presentation portion of this. Uh, what I just shared with you is uh, the email address, the phone number, the address, uh, everything for the uh, local branches. So we've got Belleville, Cornwall, and Kingston noted here. Uh, should you be monitoring from a different area, all you have to do is type in, just type in MLTSD, thank you Heather, uh, we've got some support coming from, uh, from the back here, so uh, that's great. If you type that in, uh, there'll be a link and it'll just say uh, office is located in Ontario and then uh, you just basically click on the city that's closest to you and uh, go from there. Okay, so. Um, these are the slides, and I uh, understand these slides will be sent out 
uh, at a future date. So uh, if you're not uh, not able to uh, write it down or if you're on the fly right now, uh, know full well that you're going to re be receiving this information from our fine people in the offices here. Okay. So one last question is, uh, what would you say to any person that may feel working in the trade of carpentry might be the career of career choice for them? Um, for anyone considering carpentry, um, I would just in, you know encourage them to to check it out because it's it's uh, it's such a vast trade. You go from cabinet making to uh, you've got framing, trim carpenters, stair builders. Um, you've got guys that make a living just doing decks and fences. You know they um, you can make a good living building just doing nothing but building decks. And um, if you're good at what you do, so it's kind of one of the beautiful, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet thing. It's one of the beautiful things about carpentry, but it's also one of the most frustrating things about carpentry because if you're someone like I am who wants to know how to do everything, um, you slowly become humble to realize that you might know a little bit about everything, but you can't be the best at everything. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty frustrating thing. And I'm experiencing that right now. We're, you know, we're doing a project where um, I, most of my experience comes uh, from the trim carpentry with a lot of high end trim, a lot of, uh, a lot of carpentry finish work. Um, and my exposure to uh, framing was uh, was limited to fairly I would I would consider you know basic to moderate um, framing techniques and we're doing a project right now which is um, quite a significant build and so I've had to kind of join forces with somebody who has more framing experience than I do um, which has been great it's been great to collaborate and to work with other people and that just makes you know life more enjoyable on its own but um, the humbling thing about about carpentry is that you know it's just that realization that holy smokes like it's just it's just, you can have someone who is the most incredible framer can frame anything you'd ever want but you know doesn't know how to do crown molding in a vaulted ceiling so um it's a really broad trade it can cover all the bases so if you don't think you like framing you, you think you might be just interested in, in the trim world well there's you can make a living just doing trim carpentry you can make a living just being a um a, a closet design specialist you know and, and build custom closets for people so me i get bored too easy to specialize in in the one thing so i like to have a a huge range and do everything and then just rely on building the right team where i've got experience that can kind of cover off everything that we offer as a company but uh, for the most part, anyone considering it, um, it, it really is a limitless uh, uh, world out there for what you want to get into, whether you decide to specialize or, or try and cover as much as you can. Absolutely, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and the other thing that, that I mentioned earlier is, is you could be a project manager, site supervisor. Uh, I had somebody sat me down uh, the year that I became licensed, which uh, was 1988. And uh, so it was a little while ago uh, when I became certified as a carpenter. Uh, a person sat me down and he said, Barry, he said, I just want you to know, I want you to plan for your future, uh, unlike I did. And this individual basically went through uh, his career and uh, it can be a career uh, that, that can be hard on your body, okay? Uh, or you can take on other roles, uh, project manager, site supervisor. Uh, so as far as getting into the trade, um, the sky's the limit. And the good thing about it, the beauty, I mean, here I am now, uh, almost 40 years since I uh, entered into the trade, I'm teaching it. Uh, and why am I teaching it? Because St. Lawrence College hires uh, certified uh, licensed tradespeople uh, that, that are teachers as well, as well to, uh, to teach the trade here. So um, I'm fortunate. Uh, anything that I've received in my life uh, professionally uh, is in large because I, I took the apprenticeship, became a uh, certified licensed carpenter. Uh, and uh, love every aspect of the, of the trade, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Contact information, uh, there is uh, there's my phone number and my extension. So should you have any direct questions for me, there's my email as well. Uh, if you do receive a, uh, an offer, so you do register for one of the programs and you do receive an offer, uh, make sure that you uh, respond to the extension down below. So it's the college number and it's extension 1376. And that will get you straight through to Laura Stevenson's office, actually, and uh, she will be answering the phone and uh, uh, getting everything set up for you uh, in her uh, apprenticeship office. Okay, so uh, one other thing I know I promised earlier was letting you know how uh, how to become a student in our carpentry techniques program. 
uh, you basically go to ontariocolleges.ca uh, to uh, register. But should you have any questions, I have uh, an open house date that I've just uh, put out for everybody. So uh, feel free to attend our open house, regardless whether you want to go uh, come through as an apprentice, you want to come through as uh, as uh, an apprentice going into our carpentry techniques program, Saturday, April 4th, we have a lot of fun at these open houses because we see a lot of uh, friendly people, a lot of really keen people. Uh, Nine o'clock till noon, so make sure you don't wait till the afternoon. Uh, but we'll all be here and we'll all be set up and uh, we'll be taking tours uh, around the school, showing everybody our labs, showing everybody the schools. We're very proud of the schools and very proud of our labs uh, and uh, really wanting to see everybody. So uh, other than that, uh, we have question period coming up here, but uh, I, I do definitely want to thank you once again for uh, showing it. And uh, I'm uh, just going to look over and see what our questions are. All right, Barry. Well, we have a couple of questions here. The first one says, what does the fall 2020 schedule look like as far as days and hours go? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Fall 2020? Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch both. Um, the Carpentry Techniques program will start uh, typically the Tuesday after Labor Day and uh, your in-class hours which consists of approximately about 40% theory class, 60% lab. That's where everybody wants to be when they, when they register is they, they want to uh, be in the, uh, in the labs. Uh, so so it's, uh, it's approximately 30 hours a week uh, combined between your lab and your theory classes. Um, so yeah, we would start then and would, would last for 36 weeks, so just count 36 weeks uh, minus uh, three weeks for Christmas break uh, and uh, that will give you the approximate date which is usually around mid-May, mid to end May I guess is, uh, uh, is, is when our Carpentry Techniques program ends and I haven't seen a confirmed schedule but I believe the third week of October is when we're going to receive level one uh, carpentry apprentice uh, students that are uh, going through the, uh, the employment route uh, first uh, rather than the carpentry techniques but that's, uh, that's basically what it looks like uh, and again uh, we, um, we have uh, 30 hours of classes per week and of that about 60% of it will be uh, hands-on experiential learning. So uh, what I mean by experiential learning is that you're actually in there getting your hands dirty and uh, having fun and working with the tools uh, in a safe manner because that's another thing that we, uh, we encourage, uh, not encourage, but enforce uh, safe operation of, of the tools. Did I answer your question? <laughs> I hope so. I, I hope so. I have a couple more for you. So okay. the next question is um, eight weeks of in-school apprenticeship training. Uh, the student is asking, the registrant is asking if it can be done in the summer. So maybe a little bit of clarification around that. Uh, un unfortunately, right now, uh, it, it's not offered in the summertime. Uh, we do have, uh, so, so level one is typically the third week of October until Christmas, uh, Christmas break, and so then we have three weeks off at that point in time. And when we return in January, it's January and February uh, for level two. Then there's a reading week, so we're just finishing up a, a group of, uh, with a group of level two uh, intermediate students right now. Uh, then we'll have a reading week, and then we'll have eight weeks uh, with our advanced level threes and then one thing the uh, the government actually sponsored St. Lawrence College to do this uh, many years ago about 11 or 12 years ago I think when I was asked to develop it it's called a prep week and what we do uh, is you come in uh, as a graduate so you graduate on Friday and you come back as a student on Monday uh, for one week of which the uh, government still pays you the EI for that as well uh, and then you come in and I basically have 30 hours of theory based uh, and you would think at the end of each day that people would want to go home because they'd be tired but I will tell you that I have people that stick around class for an hour to two hours after uh, because they want to make sure that they're ready for the exam. Uh, and usually that week, about Wednesday, we get confirmation from the ministry that they're able to write their exam and a good majority of them will write their exam the following Thursday or the Thursday after that. And, uh, and then we'll see a lot of uh, certified tradespeople graduating, becoming licensed. Sure, thank you, Barry. There's another one here. Um, and just as an aside, I did um, send a link um, to St. Mark's College in the chat box um, so that you can go in and take a look at the program page. It's a lot of the information about the cost awesome. and the um, 
schedule, that sort of thing, is all on the St. Lawrence College website. So please um, have folks go on in there and take a look. Um, one other question here is asking about the cost, approximately, from start to finish of the program. And I'm guessing they can find that information in the on the website page. It, it's absolutely available on our website, or uh, if you come to the open house, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a booklet. Uh, if you're anything like me, I'm, I'm sort of old school. I, I like looking through the book, but uh, I mean the information is on our website. You can go to uh, stlawrencecollege.ca uh, and uh, get the information and uh, uh, walks you through uh, what the uh, individual fees are. Uh, I, I almost hate to uh, to give you a, a quote uh, about how much it is, but uh, if you go to the website, it will definitely walk you through it. Uh, and then uh, go from there. The apprenticeship program, I, I do know uh, it's about uh, just over $400, around $425, I believe it is, for level one, and then for level two, the same thing, level three, the same thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there, there are some, uh, yeah, there's some information for the apprenticeship program. But please go to our website, and our website will, uh, will give you the most current, up to date information. All right, and just one more here. Um, they're asking about the example of a salary. Maybe um, they didn't quite um, understand the, the difference of the example that you provided, where the one okay. was straight from high school and the other one was. Can you give a little more clarification on that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Th thanks. For, yeah, if, if there's anything else that you want clarification on, uh, I'm, I'm glad whoever this person was uh, that sent uh, well, all the questions, but uh, sent this in for clarity. Um, so essentially, what my, my scenario was was somebody that graduated from high school worked in the trade for four years. Uh, at the end of that four years, they were making $27,000 per year, okay? Uh, but there's another person, so the second part of that scenario was a person that graduated from high school, started an apprenticeship right away, went through level one, level two, level three, became a certified carpenter, and uh, instead of making $27,000 a year, they're now making $60,000 a year. And, that, and that's an average. Some are making more, some are making less, but uh, that's an average for Eastern Ontario. Uh, where they're, they're actually looking at uh, $60,000 as their uh, their income after the same the exact same four years. Two different people, one's directly out of high school, one's directly uh, through the apprenticeship program. I hope that's clear. Okay, Barry, I think that's good. I don't see any other questions here right now, um, and perhaps we should wrap up uh, because we do have another one coming. Um, so is there anything else, any finishing thoughts you'd like to share? As I mentioned, uh, we're friendly people around here. My contact information uh, was on the previous slide. I'll go back here. Uh, so there's my contact information again. Uh, please feel free to send me an email. Email is best, uh, but if you uh, prefer talking on the phone, that's fine. Uh, the reason email is best is I can respond after my teaching hours uh, to you. I can probably respond a lot faster. Uh, feel free to reach out. Feel free to come to our open house. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in any way we can help or support. Uh, I, I, I'm definitely here and I, I think in general you're going to find us extremely friendly here at the college and uh, we like to uh, like to enjoy ourselves and we like to have a good time and share our trades. So other than that, uh, thank you very much for registering, participating. I know time is valuable and I've just taken 45 minutes of your day and uh, hopefully it's uh, it's been worth your while. So thank you again, Barry. Um, it's Heather here again, folks. I just wanted to say thank you for attending. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we will be following up with a, a note in a day or two, and that will have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, as well as a link to the webinar recording, and all the contact details for, of the presenter. So um, we will probably uh, have that out to you before the end of the week. And of course, we're always happy um, to answer any of your questions. So thank you to you both um, awesome. for being here and providing the information. And thank you to our audience uh, for asking such great questions. Um, we will be sure to follow up with you uh, by the end of the week. So thanks, everybody. Thank you very day. much. Have a great day.